Hello. Hello, love. I don't know what day it is. I have to add that up in a minute. Tell people why we're here. So we're here in Liberia to adopt two little girls that we've been matched with for over two years. Uh, we've been here since February 13th, uh, trying to find the truth of what's going on with our adoption. And that is soon coming to an end. Mm -hmm. We are uh, going to go home and regroup and Rachel's going to come back and we got to go home and make some money so we can <clears throat> pay for all this. We'll come back and Rachel will knock it out, hopefully quickly once the suspension is lifted. Um, but we've stayed so long because they've dangled the carrot of next week, next week. Give me that stuff. Things will move along and uh, it hasn't, so officially. So we are a little sad today. It's been a hard day. Yeah, it's been a really hard day. But, uh, um. yeah. Good news. So our dear friend Allison Sanders has um, asked if she could um, help with a fundraiser for us called Both Hands. You know, and the thing, it's like when you find out that you're pregnant with a biological pregnancy, the things your friends do is throw you a baby shower. When you find out that your friends are adopting, the things that you do are throw them a fundraiser. You know, mm -hmm. you might throw them a baby shower too, but you throw them a fundraiser. And um, so Allison has asked if she can do a sponsor a Both Hands project where... Allison will um, assemble a team of people in Tennessee. We will help her. We'll try to, we'll probably fly in and maybe be there that weekend if we can. There's pretty cheap Allegiant flights back and forth. Or we may just drive and bring the dog. But basically, you choose a widow and you, um, you get people to sponsor you to work on her house. Kind of like if you're getting sponsors for like a walkathon or a run or a marathon where people sponsor you to run or walk however many steps um, or however many miles for a certain cause. And so somebody will pay like, you know, $100 a mile or whatever. So what this is, is you're sponsoring people to work on a widow's house and do much needed repair. So Allison will get to choose a widow and the money we raise, we'll get all, we'll try to get the supplies and donated, but, or we'll use the money for the supplies. Um, but we'll have people work on a widow's house as a day project and have people sponsor them to work. And the, money for sponsorship goes to adoptive families the good news about us signing up in june is we actually are eligible for a twenty five hundred dollar matching grant too so if you oh. choose to sponsor yeah so I if you choose to so say my friend allison does this she sends you a letter i send you a letter on her behalf and say hey will you sponsor allison and you want to give like five hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or thirty dollars um then that money will actually go to our adoption both hands does not take any administrative fees at all. They do their own separate fundraising to cover their overhead and their operating costs. So they take no percentages. So we get it all. Um, but we've got to talk to JC Olson, who's the, the founder and president of that, of that nonprofit. Amazing guy to talk to. Very encouraging. Um, we had a rough day. So it was nice to end it with that. So be looking for that. And if you live in Tennessee, then you can help with the actual project. If you don't live in Tennessee and you just want to write letters to people to see if they want to help and be interested in it. Some of you guys have given us so much money and so many clothes and so many efforts. You bought so many things from us to try to make this happen. We're still going to send you a letter because we just want you to know what we're doing. But we don't. We know there's a lot of people that have given us a lot of money. And we don't expect you guys to keep giving us money if you don't want to or um, feel like you should or whatever. So, Yeah. We, um, but we, we don't have like the, we don't have the, um, mental strength or physical strength to do this project in Florida. Um, but Allison was kind enough to, to do it in Tennessee. And, you know, there's, we have a lot of connections still in Tennessee. So hopefully our Tennessee friends will be helpful for that and enjoy that. Yep. And there'll be a widow that gets blessed by that. So basically it's looking for, um, repairs that need to be done in our home. Landscaping is usually a big deal. Fixing things, painting things, things that you just can't do. Um, by yourself, especially if you are older or have any kind of medical or physical challenges. So, Yeah, real thankful for Allison for steerheading that. Yeah, it was just a breath of fresh air to be on that meeting. And just thanks, Allison. It's just a breath of, just to have that, just something different, like somebody <clears> willing <throat> to help. Because we, we're pretty, like, I, I use the term, like, we're, we're beat up and limping home. I mean, I don't, I don't want to look at this as a complete defeat, but it's certainly not. I mean, we, we just, I don't know, we just feel like that we were encouraged to, um, not by our necessarily our agency, our agency director, he's like, do whatever you want to do. I, I can't make any promises of anything that's going to be better because this is international adoption, but, but please, you're welcome to go. And we appreciated his, um, his invitation for us to visit the children and we've bonded with them a lot and now we have to say goodbye to them. 
And it's like saying goodbye. It's not just saying goodbye to R2. It's saying goodbye to 36 kids. And 16 of them, including ours, have families waiting in the States. And yeah. 20 of them need to be matched by families. And there's unmatched families as well that we've met. So it's, it's like we're severing this bridge for not just us, but for, for, for other families, 10 other families too. <clears throat> So I have all these families sending me videos and messages to show their children that they love them. Pictures of family and friends, you know, just pictures of, of people that are coming. And um, I had my girl, we, I packed up all the clothes and the toys and stuff that I was going to give our Liberian daughters here. Um, well, I plan on them living with us. So I had to kind of split up all these things for them to have. And um, I'm just leaving, I'm just going to give them their clothes. Um, sadly, I think they will outgrow the clothes that I have with me before I'll make it back. That's how, that's how bad it is. Like, that's how depressing it is. Um, so the both hands thing hopefully will help us come up with the money for me to return at least once, if not twice. Um, so we have a little bit of grant money left, but just the, I mean, we've been living here. By the time we leave, it'll be like four days shy of five months that we've, since we left home. And although I don't regret it, I, um... I'm very disappointed in the adults in the government offices that can't seem to find a way to work together and do the right thing. Yeah, there's, I mean, like you talked about all the people that have help, it's almost, it does feel like taking an L, they were taking a loss, coming home. And, but I think about, you know, after five months of visits, two to three times a week, you would think that, you know, we only stay for a couple of hours, but you wouldn't think that you would still be continuing to, like, grow your bond with these kids. But, like, even today, it's like our connection gets stronger every visit. Uh, even with the kids that that are not our Liberian kids that we're adopting, it's like all these other kids, there's just, like, new memories or new uh, moments that you share with these kids that, you know, I may not get to see again because we're leaving and you're coming back and not me. And it's really hard, you know. Um, yeah. It's just, it's hard to say goodbye to them in these terms, not a happy terms, like, hey, your family's coming too, because all this nonsense is over. Uh, but it's not, and we're still waiting on that to, to end, so. These, um, I wanted to show you guys some of this, you probably can't really appreciate it. This is a little girl, um, I'm gonna, her name's at the bottom, so I'm not gonna show that part, but this is her letter to her. Hmm future family and she has a little sister and and in this letter she talks about she would like to have a brother and a sister um she likes ice cream she want, first thing she wants to do when she gets to america is have two scoops of ice cream different flavors um that's important she says she's told me that a few times um she likes to draw she sat and worked on this and she sat by me and asked me how to spell so many words <laughs> and like my accent and her accent combined it's just but I mean, the the unmatched kids artwork to me, I I just can't like talk. I have to throw it away. But I took pictures. I'm taking pictures of all of it. This is my last stack. I usually take pictures as they give it to me, so that way I don't yeah. have to do this again at home. But um, Monday I was so just depressed that I was like, just stick it in the backpack and I'll deal with it later. Um, but like this, this is the one, I'm gonna cover up his name. One of the little boys is unmatched. He always draws um, airplanes and Ninjago, like, you know, when we were young, it was like Ninja <clears throat> Turtles. Um, but there's a few of these pictures that I'm just, and then like the little, the little bitty kids will just kind of do this and then hand it to me like it's, and I'm like, thank you. Good job. But to, to sit, you know, this little six-year-old little girl who sat and just wrote this letter, um, it, and asked me how to spell things, and I mean, it just she's, it's a serious letter. And then this one too, this one, dear mom, dad, sister, and brother, we love you. And she signed her and her brother's names, but they're not matched. They don't have a family. So I asked um, Jimbo at Small World, where our agency working with. I'm like, can I send you these? Like, so I'm gonna take. I've taken a picture of all the artwork. This is my last. Um, so each child has a folder in my phone, like a photo. Jimbo and I figured out how to, I can send him an iCloud link and he can download it um, and he can have the photos that way. But he was like, yes, please absolutely send me that. So I'm hoping when the kids get matched that their parents can have their artwork. That's a good idea. So, and this says like, thank you, Fumata, and our kids' names are Fumata and Bese. 
Thank you, Fermata and Bay Say for um thank you, Fermata and Bay Say, Mum and Dad, M U M and Dad. Mum and Dad. For everything you do for me. I wonder if I'm gonna talk like that when I get back to Tennessee. <laughs> you do have you've kinda of changed your dialect. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's funny. So, so yeah. yeah. We had the privilege though of the last couple uh, two weeks kind of explaining to our Liberian kids what we're doing, that we're leaving and they yeah. get it and like I was there talking to one of the nannies with our oldest Liberian daughter and just telling her how angry I was and sad and she she is too. She gets it. She knows that we're yeah. We feel the, me and her feel the same way. She just wants to be with us. This is a letter from one of the matched kids. But she knows mommy's coming back to get her, and I'll be excited and thank. That's really good penmanship. I don't know who that last one you showed there. This one. Lorpu. Oh, nice. So, yeah. but it was just a, I mean, it was, it's kind of bittersweet at this point. Visiting with them, so. Um, I'm looking for one letter in particular. There's one little girl. She's got to be about eight. <clears throat> she really doesn't know how old she is. Like, a lot of the kids don't know their actual age. It's my Spider-Man buddy. <laughs> um, he's, a, he's a trip. He was asking me for paper today. Um, I wasn't in a paper handing out mood. <laughs> uh, one of the unmatched little girls. Um, Mom and Dad, we love you. We hope to see you soon. We hope for a sister and a brother. We are a sister and a brother. So she wants a new sister and brother, and she has a brother, and she's a girl. And then she, she drew their picture. King and queen, <laughs> kind of. Or prince and princess, you know. Cute. Um, so... These kids are, are difficult for us to leave. There's one little girl that kept working on her letter, and then she kept, she's not matched. She's about eight. She looks about eight to me. She doesn't really know how old she is. They know when their birthdays are. The names make a big deal, but their chronological age escapes them. And I don't... It's hard. I mean, some of them, they just may just get lost in the shuffle, or, like, some of the other kids know... Like, our kids know how old they are, but they try to round up. So, it just... It's confusing, I'm sure. But, um... The oldest boy there is 11. And then there's some girls there that it's just hard to tell. Like, their chronological age. I mean, their, 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 their age is all over the map. I mean, in some ways, these kids, these 8, 9, and 10-year-old girls could probably cook you dinner. They could definitely take care of any child 5 and under successfully probably for three days. And not because they're parentified there, but just because all the kids are right there and their natural maternal instincts kick in and they take care of the babies, you know? Like, they're not required to do that, but they're, it's just part of what they do. Um, they love to crochet and knit. One of the nannies there has taught them all to crochet, all the ones that can actually do it dexterity-wise. So six, six, seven, eight-year-old girls are crocheting, and they love to do it. So I've left more money for them to buy more yarn. So if you mail yarn or want to send yarn, they, if they're seven and up, they're all of those girls are mm. knitting away, and the boys are probably trying to, too. They do a good job. There's one little boy that, I mean, if I could talk Jeremy into him, I, we, but that's what we would do. We just can't, we can't go through this process again. We don't know if we're going to make it out with the two that we are matched with, much less try to add a third. But if I was going to add a third, I would add him. And he has written me um, multiple letters saying, thank you for what you have done for me. Thank you for helping. Um, he had a little a medical thing that they really didn't understand what it was. And they took him to the doctor and they didn't really diagnose him correctly. And for me, I looked at him and I was like, oh, he just needs sour candy. And so I bought him like two big bags of sour candy because I knew if they gave it to him, they'd have to give it to everybody. And I was like, he needs to do this like five times a day for like a few days and this will clear up. And sure enough, it did. He still has a little bit of an issue that I think is probably a dental. They, they, a lot of the kids have bad teeth. And they do brush their teeth, but they just nutrition. I mean, you just can't. And some kids just have bad teeth even if you do everything right. He has a dental thing, but um, minor, but it's uncomfortable for him. So I want him to get matched soon because I want him to get his teeth. He needs a tooth pulled. Mm -hmm. But, um, but his... Um, the medical condition that's fixed with sour candy, he's still like, cause when I first got there, I was like, huh, this is easy. And he was so grateful and so happy because it was really uncomfortable for him. And for candy to fix something is makes me magical, I think. <laughs> so if, if, if he's still there in two years, I'll, I'll be coming back for him. Yes. I don't think he will be. He is like, he's awesome. Healthy, smart, 
smiling. Like there's no, there's some kids there that have things that you can see. You know that they're going to have things. They need parents that are good to support. Their, and, and the agency is well aware of the things that they, and all, kids all have things. We have ki our kids have things. Every kid has something. But there's a few kids there that it's like, they really don't. Like they may, you know, have some something come up. But the, no. by and large, they are just healthy, well-balanced, emotionally stable, mentally um, mature, just kids oh. that um, oh. that need good families. Are you bleeding? Just giving me the tape back. Yeah, my hugs for him. My hello hugs and goodbye hugs have been longer this week. I hope was, I hope whoever gets him, him. Yeah. we can connect with them as well. I mean, if it wasn't, I didn't feel like it's impossible. Or... Well, like we, I mean, it's it's just, and that's the hard part. Is like here we are sitting here, you know, willing to parent five daughters, and we've lived here. Not, it's not out of guilt or out of pity or out of fear. We just like him. He's a cool kid. And I know that we're so connected to the other families, um, and we've opened ourselves up to be connected to the Edmatch families. So, and well, I hope whoever gets him that we can connect with them because yeah. he's asked me several times in written form. He'll write me a letter in a very organized way and ask me to find him a family as good as we are. Hmm. Like, he's not asking me to take him with us, you know? But he's like, can you? And I'm like, I mean, sure. <laughs> You know how it's mad I was. It's like you a would, professional you request. You think I'm good. <laughs> it's a professional request. And it's just a, it's a heartwarming thing to hear from a seven-year-old. That, you know, he's just a seven-year-old. And so his letters always get me. Because I'm like, it's just such an easy request. Sure. Um, so. Oh, shout out to uh, Anna and Mike. I saw their oldest get really fiery today. And I was like, whoa, I haven't seen that in a while. Really? The oldest one? She was getting after really? it. Really? Yeah. What was somebody doing? Making so her mad? One of the so younger made her boys mad? was being a She had her hair done. Something. Oh. And she got she, on to them? Man. She was We've crazy. asked because the older Clark, so the younger, the Clarks are adopting two girls that are very good friends with our two girls. And I feel like what it is is like their older one is a touch older than our oldest and their younger one is the exact same age as our youngest. But whereas their older one is a little more shy, a little more reserved, a little more everything's fine everything's fine and that's how our youngest Siberian daughter is so those two are very similar but the others are a little bit more audacious especially the younger Clark when she's our older Liberian daughter has got a little a little fight to her she's a little a little bit of a little bit of something where you're like she's she's not she's not gonna let you push her around and she's if she doesn't get what she wants then she's she accepts it like she wants to go home with us but since we've talked to her so much about the process is so she's it's almost like she's consenting to us going home because it's kind of partly her idea she gets it but we have not seen the older clark i've asked the nannies i'm like did she ever get mad and they're like yeah she was she does. mad she did pretty sure there were blows but i was like whoa <laughs> yo what they do I, well, there's a there's a group of kid of boys the, the that are like boy. age like five to like seven or eight and there's about four of them that I could string him up by their toes he was pretty, a little any older. day of the week. The boy was, but he clearly submitted quickly. I think he realized he was in the room. Which little boy was it? I, I don't, I don't he remember was exactly. Confused. But it was, he was like, I'm in the wrong here, and I want to take my lumps. He submitted. And I'm going to get out. <laughs> <laughs> She's so... She said him straight quickly, and it was it was resolved quickly. So Yeah. That's funny. I'm glad to see her funny. have a little fire. Yeah, she does. Because I, I kind of, like, I guess it's just more my personality to have fire, too. I worry more, especially girls that don't have any fire. I'm like, like, do you, you know, because you just you worry about them. I don't want anybody to take advantage of them. I want them to be confident. I want them to make sure that they understand that they're important. But, uh, but yeah, no, every, every sibling duo kind of has their thing. And like our kids, we have three, our American kids, they all have their thing. But your sibling balance is important. But when you see them kind of reverse roles a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so. our our American kids giving our Liberian daughters hugs today was kind of that's kind of their routine. But They've gotten like, yeah. Sad to see. We um I have notebooks, so we all wrote little notes and letters to leave with them from each person in our family. So we wrote a letter, you know, and like my middle child, hers is a paragraph and it's thoughtful and it's it's well thought out. My eight year old is like, you know, kind of she made a drawing. She wrote a note. She means it, and then it was different to both kids. 
And then, but it, it was pretty, pretty simple and straightforward. And then my oldest child literally wrote two sentences, but they were meaningful. They were like, I miss you. I love you. Mom's coming back to get you. Don't worry. And like, <laughs> I mean, that's all she wrote, but that's what she means. So that's what we'll leave it. She's not so much on the words, but I think we've done everything we can to mm -hmm. like allow them to grieve this transition. But I gotta say like one of the kids at the orphanage had a thing today that warranted an evaluation at the ER. He's fine. You know, everything's being taken care of. He's not in any danger and all that. But it was like, we talked to Albert about it and he kind of, we, he called us and said, I just, he's like, he just wanted us to kind of vote with him. Like, just take a look. He knows what I do in the States. Um, and it's always expensive to go to the hospital. So it's, you know, it's always a, kind of a, a, a decision when you make it, you have to make it. Like it was a hundred, I think it was um, $50 to be evaluated. The test that they ordered was $100, which I was happy to pay for. He needs them. And then there was, um, that he's staying overnight. And I don't know what that bill will be, but we were, we offered just to help on the spot. We know that, like, Small World will take care of these kids, whatever they need. But the turnaround of getting those funds in someone's hands when I'm standing there is um, just, it's just low-hanging fruit for me. So I'm happy to just do that. But um, I wanted to say, like, it was a long day. I had plan on spending most of the day at the orphanage. I wanted to show some... Um, pictures to the kids I mean I just I wanted to hang out with kind of all the kids and then I wanted to spend like just Friday with my kids and so that's not what happened so tomorrow I'll be hanging out with all the kids at the orphanage we're giving some kids our, our kids some presents and then Friday we're going to take our our Liberian daughters out for um, a, a fancy lunch at a restaurant so we have approval for that so that'll be fun and then we'll go on Monday and we won't see them again before we go but I got to say, we went to the Elwha Hospital emergency room, and I was actually impressed. You know, there's a part of me that was like, I'm just so tired. Like, I slept terrible last night. I was up all night. I'm crying. I'm sad. I'm just like, I feel like I've been kicked in the teeth. But then I was like, huh, you know, like, this place is good. So they checked us in. They triaged well. They did everything. They even, like, checked a glue. Like, did everything they should do without me being like, I hope they do this. And um, fairly fast, actually. Um, I know that, I know that my ER isn't as fast as they were today, but there were people everywhere. Um, but I was, I really, the, the doctor talked to the caregivers, the nanny, one of the nannies came and then the orphanage director and talked to all of us very respectfully. Um, the orphanage director, just knowing my medical background was like, can you talk to him? Like, is there anything, you know, you want to add just because we're just trying to figure out these kids kind of had some just atypical symptoms and just weird stuff going on for about a month but it's just kind of hard to nail down you know it's like started with this maybe it's that it's just it's not straightforward even for me i'm like i'm not really sure i agree i agree with the test um hmm. but before you a 150 dollar workup in liberia is like a five thousand dollar work i mean that like like these people their income you know like a, a good income in liberia is 150 dollars a month that's that's upper middle class sure Unless you're like higher up in government, you're making ten thousand dollars a month. You're the basic working middle class that's you, you stable. Have to, you have to pay your bill that. right then. Yeah, yeah. So they wouldn't do the lab test. So they would check him out. They did his vitals, but they wouldn't they wouldn't do anything until we paid for the labs. So we paid for the hat, and then there's of course you know trying to get a kid to give us a urine specimen. There was all these things. <laughs> so all the typical things you deal with 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 kids in the ER and. Um, I like the staff at the hospital was nice. The security guards, once they decided he was staying overnight, Jeremy had left and um, the orphanage director was getting some things together for the, one of the nannies was going to spend the night with him there at the hospital. So they're just kind of arranging things. But I was, I guess in the way. So the security guard told me I had to leave and go outside and stand. And I'm like, I'm just going to be honest with you, buddy. I'm not comfortable standing outside by myself. But can I wait for my husband to come back? And he's like, well, I guess he's like, but you can't stand here. I'm like, well, where can I stand? And so it's like this room, like pretty small. And it's probably like at least maybe, maybe 40 feet, maybe to this door where you're just outside and they had the door open and this little corner that we were in had probably 10 kids. And I got to say, like, it's hard for my medical brain to turn off. There's about two of them. And I'm like, I hope you're still here tomorrow because it's not looking good. But they were being appropriately cared for. Like they were doing everything they could do. There's breastfeeding everywhere. Everybody's pulling out something. I noticed there's this one baby that the mother was there and she nursed the baby. And then it was a pretty sick baby and getting some, some um, supportive care, oxygen and whatnot. Little, like tiny. 
And um, then it was like her sister or maybe a relative came in and sat with her a while and then she breastfed the baby too. So it was like they were rotating breast, which is great. I mean, this is actually something that should be done when a baby's sick because it helps their immune system, um, you know. But at the same time, it's like, you're, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at that baby thinking, this baby would be in the ICU and we would all be like, they would be in a box, like incubator. I mean, there would be a lot going on. But instead, she's, this baby's just in the corner of a hospital. Like, I mean, oh, no room. There was no, it was one room with like 10 kids in it and one caregiver per kid. And that was why the security guard was like, you're going to have to, I was like, well, can I just stand right there? Like 40 feet away. He's like, yeah. I'm like, so you're telling me for you. I was just kind of talking to him. But the nanny that was with the, the child from the orphanage, she's like, she got on to him. She's like, so if I need help, with this with this child are you gonna help me are you gonna go outside and get her and bring her back she was getting all in his face about because she's like it's not we're not gonna be that much they've already decided we're getting a minute we're going upstairs to another room so like i don't know what that would look like but she was all defending my honor i was like that's okay so i went and sat that's outside awesome. um i mean i could still see them and then finally the the um you know the child that was getting treatment he finally went to sleep and he was pretty happy there so we could sit outside and see him but he was fun but there were babies everywhere. Most of them were little babies. But these kids are very malnourished. But I was still very impressed with the professionalism of the staff. I was impressed with the throughput. I mean, I was expecting something different. There was a part of me just being where I am right now is like, should I just apply for a job? Or should I call Delta and get on a plane tomorrow? Because it's just hard to see. There was like somebody brought in. It's just typical. And we see this in Florida. I mean, but you see this just like people driving up to the door and like these four people are like carrying somebody in and he's like half awake and like it looks like he's bleeding from somewhere and maybe his legs going the wrong way and so hang on a second so i don't know it made me miss work i'm ready to go back to work i'm sure my scheduler is excited mm -hmm. ready to do some work i need my, some money my experience when i rolled up and you guys were already back in the er oh, jeremy area. had to come find me i was like Everybody was super nice, but I was like, hey, did, did you see the white lady come in here with a small child? The only one. <laughs> the only white lady. I, I knew that was probably the case. And, I didn't see any other and white ladies. She was like, and she like got me a pass and walked me all the way back. So very, very funny. Yeah, fun. so Jeremy came in to check on us. So we didn't let the girls come in the hospital, but yeah. Jeremy went back and played at the orphanage while I stayed at the ER. And, I, and that's the thing is I wasn't sure what kind of experience we would have there, but I, I mean, I it was it was it was good i mean i was impressed it was better than i thought it would be had a very like organized whiteboard of all the patients and what's going on with them i mean it was, it was everything's paper though there's no electronic medical yeah, record it's true. true everything's paper so but everyone was nice and i, I was um that you know it was good so but one thing that really got me so as a mom it's super hard for me to leave my daughters here in liberia i just feel like i'm abandoning them or betraying them somehow but when it was really encouraging for me to see the orphanage director and the the nanny that was there the way that they care for this this kid that was you know having a day of, a bad day a day of crisis not any imminent danger at all but just a curious a curious case and hopefully and the doctor the doctor was very encouraging and he's like i you know he had some idea of what was going on he felt good about it he's like we can help him We're, i'm going to help him it's going to be fine he was very confident but um just to watch them care for him and this is a kid that he's not matched he's you know but like it was just a very encouraging thing for me to see them their teamwork how they would walk through fire for any of these kids how they're stopping their day going out of their way holding his hand hugging him making sure he understands his directions you know getting everything i mean it's just it's it's difficult to be a parent when you're not the parent and when I see them, like, responding as I would respond, were this my child, had this been my child since birth, this is how I would respond. Not ever, like, cringing. I mean, there was just no impatience. There was, everything was exactly how it should be. And I, it, it makes it easier for me to leave because as frustrated as I am, as much as I know that orphan care is not my child's best interest right now, and neither of them, there's also that moment as a parent where I'm looking at these two adults that are basically in charge of these kids, and they have a team of people just like them, that I'm like, 
they've got, I mean, there's no other, there's no one else that could take better care of him. Except for Raymond Nelson. And, and uh, you know, like, there's just, there's some people that have a heart to serve these kids. And it was not a fun day. You know, it's not like we were going for a well child day. Like, it was not fun. It was, it was stressful and <clears throat> difficult and scary, you know. But the, the confidence, the poise, the professionalism, and the efficiency was just as, as, I mean, they're basically his parents until someone else takes over. And so I'm thinking about, like, when you, when you um, come to get your kids and you don't, you're not going to spend the kind of time, God willing, you're not going to spend the kind of time we have with these caregivers and these staff. But really take a minute to thank them. Because they're, ha they're bonding with these kids more than normal. They've got these kids longer than normal. They're used to these kids being here for 15 to 18 months. Yeah. So they're grieving. And we've been on that side. We've seen them when the kid leaves and they're really sad. It's hard. And they, miss them. And they want pictures. So like if they want to be your friend on Facebook and you can send them some updated pictures and information. And that's what like the orphanage director today, he and I were sitting, you know, waiting for Jeremy to come get me and trying to make sure everything was settled for the night. We were just kind of sitting on the park bench, kind of waiting and talking. And he said, you know, there's, there's one thing that, that really cheers him up is he'll, she was showing me a picture of a little girl that was adopted early on in the program and she's a teenager now and she's like a competitive gymnast and she's dreams of the Olympics representing the U.S. in the Olympics and just like he was just telling me about her and he's told me other stories and I've told him stories of kids that I know that have come from that orphanage and I think right now for the last six months he hasn't really been able to do his job the way he wants to he's had to be in emergency mode trying to keep everybody alive under undue scrutiny and just craziness but his he's not a man of many words but his heart for these kids future is is um is uncommon in liberia sadly if everyone had a heart for these kids futures no matter what the way he does and the way the nanny that cared for the, the way those two people do this would not be a problem this would be the smoothest process ever. And it used to be smooth. And we have to believe that it's going to go back to that. But even if it doesn't, my kids are safe. I, I don't want to leave them. It's not my favorite choice, but... Amen. I'm not scared. So They're good people. Yeah. They are the people. That, they're, they're like, how do you raise 36 kids? I don't know. Well, when I walked in, I, I could see the... Uh, the head nanny sitting with the, the child and you could just see the concern in her face i mean she loves these kids and she want. i mean it's like she's suffering because that kid is sick as any any person would any parent any parent yeah so i can't imagine <clears throat> the loss when they because every day they grieve for the kids because kids want to go but once they leave oh i mean i've seen that look it's terrible for them i, I mean i'm happy for the kid and the, and the family but i'm I mean, and they are them. too. I'm, I'm, they're happy, but they're sad because they're going to miss them a lot. It's just, it's not just a job for these people, especially these women. It's not just a job. No. It is, it's not um, for the orphanage director either and the, t and the two security guards that help. Like, it's not just, I mean, when, like, when we were getting ready to leave, you know, they were like, there was just such concern uh, for this one child. And even though it's not like, I would not, definitely not any kind of imminent danger. I mean, it was just, it's not feeling. It just needs an extra, th extra set of ice. But it was a just group concern, group, group care, just a family. And so every time we adopt a child from that orphanage, we're breaking up their family. So it's true. It's necessary, but that's what we're doing. And so I don't know. But I, I felt encouraged today. It was exciting to talk about a new fundraiser since we're gonna. Probably, I'll probably have to make one, if not two, trips back to Liberia. To finish this out, minimum, minimum one, maybe two to three, and um, it was it's sad for me to pack up their clothes and give them their clothes because they're probably gonna outgrow. I mean, I'll just buy them new clothes when I come back again. I'm not carrying their clothes home, that's for sure. <laughs> so oh, yeah. my American kids, the most disappointing thing for them is they have they have heard people talk about court in Liberia and how it's kind of a party and a celebration. And they have been really excited about wearing their matching butterfly dresses. But I talked to the girls today. I was like, I think I'm just going to give 
our Liberian daughters their their butterfly dresses, even though we're not gonna match. You know, your eyes aren't gonna match, but um, not gonna. But they're the thing that my American kids talk about is they're really sad to miss the court party. And I was telling um, the nanny today that was at the hospital with me about that. I was letting her know about that. And um, yeah, it was I mean, funny. She laughed. She's too. like, I don't know if it's that big of a party. I'm, I'm going to miss that too. So, yeah, you are. I'm going to party it up by myself. I'm going to kiss. They make you kiss the Bible. Now you have to swear on the Bible miss. and kiss the Bible. And like one girl, like her, the page that they opened for her to kiss the Bible, there was this big lipstick stain on it. She had to do it anyway. You'd be like, it's I can't wait. I'll kiss whatever you want me to kiss. Just give me Bible. my kids. <laughs> Can I so, get a new one? <laughs> <laughs> give me my kids. So this is a little better video, I guess. I'm sorry it's so long. I always think it's going to be short because I'm so tired. I'm so out of words. But today was good. You find the words, baby. They, I'm trying to just say the same thing over and over. Thank you to Allison for holding us up for this last track. Yeah, thank you, Allison. Because I totally am going to scream like um, Chewy when they shut the airplane door. Please don't. Ah. Hopefully I get our flights worked out. You will. You're a champion. <sighs> Jeremy's like, I'm going to get tired of washing dishes. I'm like, you know, we all have our strengths. That's not mine. I cut my finger. Man, it's insane. My how fingers much... are falling apart because I've been taking my daughter's hair out and putting their extensions back in <clears throat> so, so her hair won't fall out. And... Families that are coming here that are going to be cooking, be prepared to buy lots of vegetable oil. We go through like a gallon every four or five days. I still think we should have just bought us a $200 oven. Nope. Yeah, we I feel better. You feel better? I'm ready to say goodbye. Our therapy sessions are our videos. Goodbye. Peace.